Hi there. Welcome to Trigonometry for Precalculus of Math 11. We're taking a look at standard position angles in quadrant one. Um, if you think back to basic trigonometry, which you uh, should have seen, uh, we know that sine theta can be thought of as a ratio of sides. It's really the opposite side of the hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent. A lot of times we kind of shorthand this into a little acronym so that we can remember it. Kind of this so katoa idea. We can extend away from the idea of a basic triangle floating in space to having the angle represented by rotating around the Cartesian coordinate plane. And if you think of the Cartesian coordinate plane, that's just the xy axis, um, we're going to anchor it as rotation. Much like in any other measurement, we need to define what an angle of zero is. So we have a lot of different things. We measure a lot of things, and we know what zero is. Zero degrees Celsius, that represents something. In rotating an angle, we consider a zero angle as the positive x-axis. And that positive x-axis, that's where we're starting. We call that the initial arm. So, on our little picture to the right here, that positive x-axis is the initial arm. We can then define a positive angle as counterclockwise rotation. So hopefully you remember what counterclockwise and clockwise is. So counterclockwise rotation is a positive angle, and clockwise rotation is a negative angle. So in this picture here, if we rotate in the counterclockwise direction, that is positive. If we rotate in the clockwise direction, that's a negative angle. The line that we draw at that angle is known as the terminal arm. So we have a couple of few more pieces of terminology here. Terminal arm, this would be the terminal arm. So it's angular measure, it's kind of uh, hinged on zero, zero, our origin, and it rotates around. When we draw our angle in its appropriate location, we then call it a standard position angle. So a standard position angle, that's just an angle where it just lands in the right spot. Lastly, the smallest acute angle between our terminal arm and the x-axis, so basically the smallest angle between that arm and the x-axis, if it's the positive axis, positive x-axis or negative x-axis, doesn't matter, and it's called the reference angle. <clears throat> and what we're going to use for reference angle is I'm going to use a little theta symbol. Theta is the Greek letter TH, but we're going to use that for angles, and I'm going to use a little subscript of R, so theta sub R. So, sketch the following angles in standard position and determine their reference angle. The first one is rotation by 137 degrees in the positive direction. So if we're rotating in the positive direction, that's counterclockwise, let me label straight up, I think we understand is 90 degrees, that's a right angle. Straight left is 180 degrees, 270 is straight down, and 360 we come back to the start, or zero. So all you need to ask yourself is, 137 degrees, is it bigger than zero? You bet. Is it bigger than 90? Sure. Is it bigger than 180? Not so much. So what we're going to do is we're just going to draw it, our terminal arm, in that quadrant. This rotation here is our positive rotation by 137 degrees. What I need to find, though, is this angle in there. That is the smaller angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis, and that's going to be our reference angle. So what two numbers am I really dealing with here is I'm dealing with two lines. One line is formed by this number here of 180 degrees, and one number is formed by the fact that our line is at 137 degrees. So the amount between them, basically the big number minus the small number, and we end up with a reference angle of 43 degrees. Why don't you guys give negative uh, 123 degrees a shot? Hit pause now. So a negative 123, that's negative rotation. 
90, 180, 270, 360. I like to think of negatives in trigonometry just as a direction, and we kind of use up the negative in the fact that we are rotating in the clockwise direction. That's why I label the, card the cardinal directions that straight down, straight left, that's still positives. So 123 is going to end up in that quadrant there. We're using 180 degrees and basically an amount of 123. So the amount between them, which would be theta sub r, is 180 minus 123. Now it's just an amount. We gotta stop stop thinking about oh it's negative, it's positive. We need to figure out that amount and that's 57 degrees. The reference angle, you might want to write this down, the reference angle is always, 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 you might only want to write one always, positive. So if we define a point as lying on the terminal arm, we then call it a terminal point. So above, in the above picture, I had a terminal point. That was point P. Here in this picture, I have a terminal point um, sitting on that uh, terminal arm. And what we can do is we can use, <coughs> excuse me, we can use basic trigonometry to figure out the value of that point. The coordinates of that point, I should say. Um, the x amount and the y amount, because those are the coordinates of the point. And if you think about it, what we can do is we can take cos of theta, which is x over r, and solve for x, and there's our x coordinate, is r cos theta, as we can see in the coordinate, r cos theta. We can do the same thing for the y coordinate and we get that the y coordinate is r sine theta. So x has to do with cos a lot, y has to do with sine a lot. Let's drop down here, the point P is on the terminal arm of the standard position angle theta, determine the distance r from the origin to point P, determine exact values of all three perimeter, uh, primary trigonometric ratios, and determine the measure of the angle theta. So a lot of stuff going on here. Let's start with a picture. Let's go into Cartesian coordinate uh, plane here. Uh, 5, 3 is right about there. That would be 5. That would be 3. It's just a rough guess. Let's pretend that forms an angle of theta. Let's move these values to show that they are the actual lengths of the sides of the triangle. So there's 5, 3. That's typically how we're going to draw these points now. Let's figure out the radius or the hypotenuse of this using Pythagoras. r squared is equal to 5 squared plus 3 squared. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. r squared is 25 plus 9 r squared is 34, r is the root of 34. Nice exact value answer, don't need to do anything fancy here. Let's now figure out what those sides are. Uh, we have sine theta, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that's a nice exact value. We have, let's do cos here, cos theta. Cos theta is adjacent which is 5 over root 34. And we have tan theta, which is opposite over adjacent. So that's 3 over 5. So we have the radius is root 34. We have all three trig ratios. What else do we need to do here? Determine the measure of the angle theta. So I like to use primary information when I try and do uh, further steps. I was given in the question the fact that the point was 5 and 3. I'm going to make sure I use 5 and 3 here. Uh, which trig ratio has 5 and 3 would be tan. So, little less chance of error if I use that. How do I solve for theta is using arctan or second function tan on your calculator. And we should end up with an answer in degrees here. Let's bring up the calculator here. Uh, we have second function tan 
of 3 divided by 5 and that should give us an angle in degrees and we get 30.96 and they wanted it nearest 1 degree so that's 31 degrees. Why don't you give example 2b a try there with the point 27. Hit pause now. So let's tear through this a little bit quicker maybe. 2 and 7 r squared is 2 squared plus 7 squared, r squared is 4 plus 49, r squared is 53, r is the square root of 53, that's a nice number. Let's go into sine theta, cos theta, tan theta, sine theta is 7 over root 53, cos theta is 2 over root 53, and tan theta is opposite over adjacent, which is 7 halves. And again, let's use that primary information, the fact that we know the 7 and 2 is for sure right, to solve what theta is. Again, arc tan of 7 halves. And if you punch that in your calculator, hopefully you end up with 74.05-ish, which to the nearest degree would be 74 degrees. So a similar idea, we're just in uh, the first quadrant here, which is that top right corner. So not too bad, don't need to worry too much about these things. Just a few little odds and sods here, little odds and ends. We have uh, trigonometry is essential to navigation. Uh, and when we talk about navigation, direction is described as an angle relative to a compass direction. So you might remember from your um, grade school, learning little acronyms to remember the cardinal directions. And the way we read this is we start out by heading the first direction. So that is, let me get rid of a little bit there. So start by going west. From there, we are going to rotate by 20 degrees north. So if I head west, that's initially to the left. And if I just rotate up by 20 degrees, Y up, because it's supposed to be north, that's 20 degrees in here, that would be our direction. So west, 20 north. So south, 40 east is, let's head south first, and then head towards east by 40 degrees. So that's south, 40 east. Just kind of an odd thing. So let's talk about for an angle theta and standard position. Pythagorean theorem. It's actually kind of neat what happens when we deal with the Pythagorean theorem here. The hypotenuses are, we know that those two sides based on trig from above are r cos theta and r sine theta. Let's go with basic Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's, well, let's pick side A as, I don't know, R sine theta. That's squared. The B side, let's call that the cos theta, R cos theta. That's also squared. And that should equal R C squared, which is R squared. Simplifying this a little bit, that's R squared. It's sine theta squared. So let me write sine theta squared. I'm going to show you a little notation for that in a second. R squared cos theta squared, and that equals r squared. Notice that the r squareds all cancel. We can divide out by that. I'm going to show you this little notation. When you have sine of theta all squared, you can write it that way, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. And when we canceled out the r's, we get a 1. Now, although it doesn't look like much now, that is a super important trigonometric identity that we're going to use a lot. Anytime you take sine of theta and square it, and add to that cos of theta squared, whatever those two numbers are, should add up to 1. Lastly, let's take a look at this. There's two exact value triangles you need to know. Uh, in class, we'll take a look at a 30, 60, 90 triangle. For now, let's just take a look at this 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this is an isosceles triangle with base angles of 45 degrees. 
we can arbitrarily pick whatever value we want for a side. We're actually just looking for a ratio of sides here, but let's just pick any number. I don't know. Let's pretend that side is 5. Because that side is 5, and because it's an isosceles triangle, the leg lengths are the same. Base angle is the same, leg lengths are the same, 5 and 5. We can calculate R by using Pythagoras. So R squared is 25 plus 25. R squared is 50. So R is the root of 50. Now root of 50, I know, has a perfect square in it, has a perfect square of 25, and root 2. So that's 5 root 2. So the cool part about this triangle is that when we pick sides 5, 5, this is 5 root 2. So if we picked any number, like 7, it should be 7, 7, 7 root 2. It should be exactly the same. So how are we going to remember this? Well, instead of picking just random number 5, 7, that sort of thing, let's go with probably one of the easier numbers out there. Let's go with a 1. 1, 1, and root 2. That's 45 degrees. That's a 90 degree angle. So you need to remember that the 45, 45, 90 triangle has a 1, 1, root 2 sides, kind of in a reduced idea. It could be any ratio, but certainly 1, 1, and root 2. I thank you for joining me for standard position angles for this trigonometry unit.